everybody, it's Dr. Ron. I want to talk all about thyroid disease. Now, what exactly is a thyroid? A thyroid is a gland. And what a gland is, is something that produces hormone. And hormones help the body communicate from one organ to another organ. And so the thyroid actually sits right over here, right above the clavicle right here on the base of the neck. And the thyroid secretes thyroid hormone. And the thyroid hormone is what I like to call a gateway hormone. And what that means is that allows other hormones to work, it allows the body to work, it allows metabolism to function, allows your body to take in sugar, use energy, and when the thyroid hormone is off, people generally do not feel well. They're fatigued, they have brain fog, they have hair thinning, hair loss, they have all sorts of different symptoms that's associated with either slowing down or uh, just really fogginess. And um, <clears throat> that level of fogginess that people experience can be really profound or barely even there. And, and a lot of times it's really hard to pick up. So in this day and age, people have a hard time distinguishing, hey, what's really just me being tired? Or is it really a hormonal issue? And that's really when, you're, when your doctor comes into the picture and says, hey, maybe there's something going, with, going on with your hormones and could it be the thyroid? So I'm gonna focus on the thyroid, but you know, the big picture is that there's a lot more to the body's equilibrium than just the thyroid. The body has to have a balance of thyroid hormone something called adrenal hormones and uh, sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone and progesterone and a few other hormones that are related to that. But I'm gonna be concentrating on the thyroid because uh, one in four people, um, statistically speaking, will have some sort of uh, thyroid abnormality or be, are affected by uh, thyroid disease sometime in their lifetime. Now, the most common cause of uh, Thyroid abnormalities in America is, is autoimmune disease or, or Hashimoto's disease. And with Hashimoto's disease, um, what happens is that the thyroid is affected by something called antibodies. Antibodies are what your bodies produce to try to fight off either infections or something foreign that's in the body. Now, why would your body create these, um, these frontline soldiers, if you will, these, these antibodies towards the thyroid, and that seems to be a bit strange, but that's where the idea of autoimmune disease occurs. And so autoimmune means that the body creates these, these antibodies towards our own body cells. Thyroid tissue is just one of them. So where, where does that come from? So what happens is that over time, as our body goes through a lot of stress, and we may not be eating the, the best things, and our body accumulates certain toxins, our body starts to develop these antibodies towards these toxins. And what are these toxins? These toxins could be food coming into your body. They could be accumulation of, of mercury through, uh, through the dental amalgams. Um, they could be accumulation of even mold toxins. You know, after this 2017, we had a really horrible year of, uh, of, of hurricanes and, and, and different things all over the world. And mold's become a real big issue. Mold actually directly affects thyroid activation. And these toxins you know, could be what we call non-metal toxins, like when you go to the gas station and you smell that gasoline, over time, if your genes do not allow you to produce enzymes that detox from that, you can accumulate these toxins. So these particular toxins are the, some of the things that we look for as a root cause of thyroid disease. And it can, and it can stimulate the body to produce these, these autoantibodies that start attacking the thyroid. So environment is really important. Food is extremely important. Stress is really important. Sleep is very important. And so all these things compounded together can affect how the body's thyroid uh, hormones work. And on the topic of autoimmune thyroid disease, which is the most common form of thyroid disease in America, there are certain things that we can do for our bodies to, to minimize uh, the effects of this autoimmune thyroid disease. Number one, the body needs to rest. And if you are a, a caregiver or, or a busy mom or busy dad, and if you are going through a lot of different stresses, if you're a night shift worker, um, you're people in the healthcare industry who work at nighttime, ER doctors that I know, nurses, if you're a police officer, you go through diff various different shifts that can be very, very taxing on the body. When you, when you go through these different shifts, 
the body's hormone become dysregulated. And in fact, uh, it's not just the thyroid hormone that becomes dysregulated, it's the adrenals or, this, or the steroid hormones that our body have naturally produces that become affected. And ulti ultimately, it's going to lower the activation of thyroid hormone and testosterone and even estradiol in women uh, uh, over time with these particular stressors. Now, a lot of these, a lot of these stressors are something that we do not, that it's, it's all about our perception, our perception of stress. And so through our perception, we, we have to make sure that everything that comes externally, we have to somehow deal with it um, so that we're not as stressed out. So whether that be, you know, um, spending, you know, one day a week just focusing on yourself, even just two to three minutes of meditation every morning, um, making sure that you're nice and relaxed, getting massage, infrared saunas and stuff like that. You know, these are really important things to almost like reset the body. So it's not just psychological, it's hormonal. Another thing is food. When, when certain foods come into the body, for example, sugars, processed sugars, processed foods, and even uh, the, some, some fish can contain mercury as well. These all can affect how our body's hormones uh, are activated or deactivated, whether it's through thyroid hormones, adrenal hormones, or, or sex hormones like testosterone. And so, and, and we have to make sure that the food that's coming in is going to be uh, what our body's using to, to produce uh, energy, to, to make sure that we have a nice equilibrium. So some of the most common foods that actually affect the, the thyroid hormone are number one by far is things that contain beta casein. Beta casein is a protein that's in dairy. This is very different from lactose intolerance Lactose intolerance is when you eat dairy, it goes into your body, and then you have diarrhea or some sort of abdominal discomfort. Beta casein is actually the protein portion of, of dairy that a lot of people react to, especially with thyroid disease. And um, when our body produces antibodies towards this beta casein in dairy, uh, it can also uh, produce uh, what's called cross-reactivity. It means that the antibodies can attack other parts of our body can attack our pancreas, for example, which is one of the main causes of adult onset type 1 diabetes. It can attack our thyroid hormone causing, causing this uh, uh, Hashimoto's uh, antibodies or even Graves' disease. And so dairy is, is, is kind of numero uno in this uh, autoimmune world. Number two, number two is gluten. Uh, whenever I talk about gluten, I really want to make sure people understand that gluten is a really natural substance. It, it occurs, you know, everywhere on, on the earth. So why is it a big deal now? And it wasn't a big deal in 1954. And it's because um, gluten is also a protein that's found in uh, wheat, barley, uh, rice, sometimes spelt. And this, these gluten molecules, um, after the um, agricultural industry, hybridize uh, the, the, the wheat uh, strains all over the world, but mostly in the U.S. and Europe. These particular wheat strains actually contain about 220 times more uh, gluten concentration, and which is not a really a natural thing that exists. And these glutens also um, uh, have uh, side chains on it called FODMAPs, and these side chains can also tag on to other different environmental toxins like pesticides. And so uh, gluten is in a lot of wheat, and wheat um, is genetically hybridized um, to resist something called Roundup, or, or um, uh, the active ingredient in Roundup is called glyphosate, which is a pesticide. And so really, it's not just about gluten. It's about gluten. This VODMAP side chain is about pesticides that we're consuming that is not natural. So gluten itself is natural, but all the stuff that comes with gluten in, in this day and age is not really natural and our body has not adapted to it. So when our body sees gluten into our GI tract, into our cells, it recognizes a lot of the stuff, especially the pesticides, as a foreign thing. So our body starts to ramp up our defenses and starts making these antibodies towards these gluten molecules. And uh, it's not just one antibody, it's actually a series of 27 of them. There's, uh, there's gliadin, there's, uh, there's low molecular weight glutenine, there's just all sorts of different molecules. And on top of that, our body can make antibodies to, um, to the, the rest of the, uh, the wheat molecule. And these molecules contain other proteins that are in there that our bodies are uh, uh, tagging on more and more of these first-line defenses, these autoantibodies for. And ultimately, that can result in antibodies towards the, th uh, the thyroid as well. 
And so, you know, it's really complex. And in the topic of environmental medicine, you know, this is a very hot topic because these are modifiable things that you can do for your thyroid. And so that's why we really, really harp uh, on getting uh, people to be gluten-free just to minimize the amount of pesticides and um, these, uh, these FODMAPs coming in. And we really harp on people to be dairy-free because we know that the, we know that, uh, the uh, beta casein, or, uh, the protein that's in dairy, um, uh, is cross-reacts with a lot of different antibodies causing autoimmune disease. Not just autoimmune thyroid disease, but, but uh, lupus, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's disease, and all these particular different things. It's not uh, as simple as just taking away gluten and dairy and then having a relaxed lifestyle um, and that, that, will, that will be cured for everything. But we have to make sure um, that, uh, you know, aside from, from not eating the wrong foods, aside from sleeping well, aside from being relaxed, that we also have to make sure that we're not exposed to certain environmental toxins, which brings me to my next point, environmental toxins. Environmental toxins are everywhere. We kind of live in a toxic world. Um, and these environmental toxins uh, come in the form of, you know, particular side products. Like if you drive next to the highway, there's dust and everything kicked up. There's, uh, there's fumes uh, from cars that are kicked up. Um, there are, there are uh, other chemicals uh, that exist in the air and, ex and that will uh, ultimately land on your, your, your shirt, your pants, your skin. You inhale it. All these environmental toxins can play a really, really humongous role in... Uh, in, in thyroid disease. Now, why are some people affected and other people are not affected by these particular environmental toxins? And the reason is this. We all have different genes. We're all made up of different DNA. And sometimes um, as we be developed in, in, the, in the uterus, we can have different mutations as well. So there are particular mutations that are associated with the inability to handle the toxic load. And, um, and what that means is that there are mutations that, um, that really uh, suppress the secretion of different enzymes that the liver is supposed to make to tag onto these toxins, bring it into the bile duct, and then eliminate it. And especially those people who have had uh, gallbladder surgeries who don't really have a gallbladder, um, the, the bile duct can become real slow and sludgy. And so, and so that is part of a detox that is supposed to happen naturally in the body, and it may not be. And so because, you know, um, humans have evolved over time, um, but the industrialization is actually a very short period, which means that we are exposed to, to more toxins right now that our bodies have not been evolved to deal with over the last, you know, 10,000 years or so. And so these, these environmental toxins are also in the toxins of bacterial and viral toxins, which can affect the thyroid disease. So what bacteria? Um, we all know about stuff like MRSA, uh, which is a MRSA, which is a methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, and there's other staph species like Marcon's is another example. And these are, uh, these, these are things that are on our body, in our noses, they're, they're kind of everywhere and uh, that can have a, a, a just an underlying slow infection or, or, or uh, inflammation that really suppresses something called thyroid activation in our body. And viruses, for example, for example Epstein-Barr virus is, uh, is a very big topic. Epstein-Barr virus can cause chronic fatigue syndrome. The virus can cause people to develop leukemias and lymphomas and other different cancers as well. Uh, the virus can cause people to have um, just be really chronically ill for a long period of time. The virus can cause people to have high histamine reactions like allergy reactions and stuff like that. And this virus can cause autoimmune thyroid disease. And it can cause thyroid deactivation even without autoimmune thyroid disease. So Epstein-Barr virus is another example. And uh, there's, there's chronic parasites that exist in the linings of our, of our intestines uh, that can cause it as well. And so to investigate the, the root cause of thyroid disease, you can tell it's actually very complicated. And not only is it complicated, it requires a very deep level of understanding of how the thyroid actually works and what could be, uh, what could be contributing factor to, to optimize people's uh, thyroid hormones. So it's not as simple as, hey, you have low thyroid, we're going to give you some thyroid hormone and we end there. No, we have to give you thyroid hormone so your body can, can, can start to heal but we have to find out what are the other underlying causes that's causing your thyroid to be inactivated 
or what are the un underlying, uh, other underlying causes that's causing this autoimmunity or the autoimmune thyroid disease. And that's something that we have to investigate uh, very heavily. Most people do not know that they have thyroid issues until we actually look for it. And so uh, conventionally, uh, what uh, most uh, physicians do is they check something called TSH. Um, TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. And thyroid stimulating hormone is, uh, is secreted by an area in the brain and it stimulates the thyroid to produce this hormone. And then um, and when the thyroid produces hormone, it produces um, T1, T2, T3, T4. These are different thyroid hormones. But uh, T3 and T4 are the ones that we're going to focus on because these are the active and storage components. So when the thyroid secretes T4, the T4 is mostly used as the storage form of the thyroid hormone and it converts into T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone. And so oh, what we have to do is look at your TSH and then look at your, your T4 and then T3. And then there's something uh, additional called reverse T3. Uh, and I'll tell you exactly what that means and why everybody should really know about this number called reverse T3. So the way that thyroid hormone works is that the thyroid produces these hormones, T4 and T3. The T4 can turn into T3, which is the active component, or the T4 can turn into something called reverse T3. Uh, which is the inactive component of thyroid hormone. And so some people have a really high reverse T3 and a relatively low uh, um, uh, T3, then what happens is that we know that something external is causing the body to, uh, to allow the conversion of this T4 into this reverse T3, but we need to go in the other direction into the T3. So how does that relate to you? The way that it relates to you is that if your body is using this T4 uh, to, to make reverse T3 rather than T3 itself, then you can experience uh, the symptoms of hypothyroidism, like fatigue and brain fog and hair loss and everything like that. But unfortunately, um, you're, we're not getting the whole picture. And we're not getting the whole picture is because your doctor likely have only ordered a TSH and, and a T4 or free T4, not knowing really what the reverse T3 is or the active component, which is the, the normal T3. And without knowing that picture, it's really hard to say, hey, you know, you're, you have underactive thyroids, and so we can give you some, some, uh, some levothyroxine or synthroid or something like that um, to give you support for your thyroid hormone without really addressing the underlying parts. We ha really have to address the underlying reason why people are having these, these uh, thyroid conversion abnormalities. And so um, uh, looking, at, looking at T3 is highly important. Looking at this something called reverse T3 is, is very important. And so when people take thyroid hormone, the most commonly prescribed thyroid hormone is levothyroxine or Synthroid is the brand name. Now, if, if I'm taking uh, Synthroid or levothyroxine, which is purely a, a synthetic T4, and my body is not converting that T4 into T3 very efficiently, um, just, driving the, uh, just driving my body to uh, make uh, uh, reverse T, T3, which is the inactive component, by giving, giving my body extra T4 doesn't make a whole lot of sense for a lot of people. So a lot of people tend to get on you know, other, um, other thyroid hormones like Armour Thyroid or, or Nature Thyroid, which is a, called a desiccated thyroid hormone, which is a combination of, uh, of uh, T3, T4, and actually does have T1 and T2 in it as well. Um, and so some people require that. In fact, you know, most people with underactive thyroid or uh, like to th thyroid uh, resistance um, need that sort of T3 support for people to start feeling better. And so, you know, as I'm talking about this, you know, you may be wondering what your thyroid function really is. You know, it, it, you know, did when your doctor said, hey, your thyroid levels look normal, is it really normal? Is it really normal for you? And how do you feel? And if you are one of those people who went to your doctor and said, hey, I think my thyroid is off, um, but uh, you only get uh, like a TSH and a, and a free T4 checked, it may not be the whole story. In fact, it's definitely not the whole story. There, without looking at all the other components of thyroid hormone, it's really hard to understand what your body is actually doing. And so when we, when we dissect down on the different, different stages or the different partitions of these particular thyroid hormone, 
it allows us to say that, hey, we need to look at something else that's causing your thyroid abnormalities and not just give you some medicine and, and see you in you know, six months. We need to figure out, hey, are there other environmental toxins that's, that, we, uh, that, are, that are there? We have to look at, uh, look at your genetics. Are, do, you con do you have these particular genes that inhibit you from, from detox mechanisms in your liver and that may be causing thyroid hormone. We have to not only look at your genes, but we have to look at how your genes are expressed. Uh, meaning that if you, have, if you have certain genes, it doesn't mean that your body has to express them. Um, and are there ways to turn off those particular genes? And the answer is yes. It's called a study of epigenetics. And we want to turn off the genes that may not be doing you any favors. We want to turn off the gene expressions that disallow you from, from detoxification, that disallow you from uh, doing things like uh, building up your body's DNA, that disallow you from activating your body's metabolism, uh, something we like to call mitochondrial activation. And so, you know, the, the complexity of the thyroid is just the, just the beginning of the picture. Once we look at people who have underactive thyroids, we want to investigate all the other different aspects of what's going on. We want to know how your other hormones are doing. We want to know uh, what, what are you eating on a daily basis. And if you're not eating the things you should, well, should you make some changes so your body can activate uh, these particular thyroid hormone processes? We want to be able to know how you're sleeping at night. Do you have maybe undiagnosed sleep apnea? Sleep apnea is one of them, it's probably the most common cause of thyroid deactivation. Is, is the sleep apnea is because as your body is trying to sleep, it's trying to heal. As you're, at nighttime, if your oxygen level goes, goes down pretty far, you're not getting good quality sleep and your oxygen levels are low, which means your adrenal hormone, which is, your, which is your, uh, um, the hormone that secretes your steroid hormones, is, is really ramped up at nighttime and that can deactivate the thyroid as well. And so uh, we have to know how you're sleeping. We have to know, well, what are you doing on a daily basis? Are you eating really late at night? Do you have reflux? If you have acid reflux, most likely uh, you can have deactivation of thyroid hormone. Or even more importantly, if you have acid reflux and you're taking Tums, you're taking uh, you know, Pantoprazole and all these acid blockers, um, they can have a detrimental effect on thyroid activation as well. And so in, this, is the, this, is, this is the topic of lifestyle medicine and you know, how to minimize someone from, from taking uh, particular medications and also reversing chronic disease. So thyroid, as I'm explaining this, you can probably tell the thyroid is just the just just beginning of the picture. And so everybody can, ha everybody can be diagnosed with one disorder like low thyroid or hypothyroidism, but they can come to it from way different avenues and we have to attack it from different, different, uh, uh, different avenues. And so one person may have uh, underactive thyroid or low thyroid and they do well on one particular medication and somebody does well on another medication. Why? It's because, yes, they both have hypothyroidism, but one person may be having hypothyroidism from just from uh, underactive thyroid from sleep apnea, and the other person may have hypothyroidism because they have autoimmune thyroid disease from having uh, uh, too much mercury or not being able to detox their body away from, from mercury too much. So we really have to find the, the underlying cause of all this. And so, um, a lot of practitioners uh, sort of question this concept of whether uh, we should be checking for the entire thyroid panel in the first place um, because um, while we can check T3 and we can check reverse T3, if the physician is not really practicing a lifestyle type of medication, there's not really a way, there's not really a way to just medicate it and to cover it up. And so we really have to figure out what are some lifestyle changes that we can do when we find these abnormalities? What are some actionable things that we can do? And there are a lot of actionable things that we can do. When people take thyroid hormone, people have an have a understanding that, hey, I have to be on this hormone forever, right? Well, that may not be necessarily be true. If we're actually looking for the underlying cause of your thyroid disease, and we're actually uh, putting forth a really good effort to looking at why you really have thyroid disease, not everybody has to be on thyroid hormone forever, number one. And number two, um, it depends on how far into the disease we are. Some people have really bad autoimmune disease, um, that um, they may have to be on thyroid hormone forever. And some people have just, just very basic uh, thyroid deactivation from sleep apnea, from, from you know, obesity, diabetes, you name it.
And if we actually resolve all those things, um, they may not need to be on thyroid hormone, which happens for a lot of people. And so, um, are you doomed to be on, on, on thyroid medicine forever? Maybe not. It does take some work. It does take some knowledge. It does take uh, having a partnership with your physician or, or your dietitian or nutritionist or a health coach. Uh, to, and it takes a team to, to try to figure out what is the root cause of thyroid disease and how can I attack it from, from all different angles. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you like, share, follow this page if you haven't already. And I really, really, really want you to uh, really focus on yourself today. Just have two minutes of meditation. Have the inner calm, because I'm about to do that after this. Um, make sure that uh, your, your diet is on point, you're eating right. Just do yourself a favor, nourish your body, and make sure that you live a long and prosperous life, we call it in, 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 in Chinese. Um, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks.